Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I have a, a, a show on a local Christian radio station here, and I'm going to be doing a, a teaching right now, the audio for that, but I decided I'd video it also for you that are watching here on YouTube and post to YouTube. So I am going to swing over there and get to the audio part, and then I'll come back to the video part. But uh, thank you for checking it out and put your questions below the video, and it's a very good topic today. I, I know you'll enjoy, so just hang in there and... Uh, and and let me know what you think of it, okay? Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson from Torah Life Ministries, and thank you for tuning in the show today. We have a show here on the radio every week, and I'm really excited. I'm hearing from more and more people out there about the show, and people are learning and growing, so that's just wonderful. Now, today's topic is going to be a little different than what I've been speaking about recently or lately, but today's topic has more to do with current events. And uh, there's a current event that's related to the Bible that's happening this month, which we're currently in, depending on when you listed this in, April 2016. That is a very interesting and also a very sad thing that's happening. And I'm just going to read the title here, and then I'm going to give you some scriptures of why this is so sad and so bad. Because really, when it comes down to it, most people are not uh, familiar with many of the scriptures found in the Bible. And, and that includes Christians. And uh, when they hear things like what's taking place or what I'm going to talk about today, uh, most people are not alarmed. Most people are, don't really care. But we need to care because this is a serious thing. And it's, it's another sign. It's a sign of the end times upon us or coming upon us real quickly. And what can we do about it? Well, that's something maybe we could discuss in the comments below here or also uh, we'll discuss at the end here. But basically the title is, it says, The Arch of the Temple of Baal is to be recreated in New York City and London in April 2016. Now, that wasn't a mistake, folks. If you heard what I said, a replica of the Ark from, uh, from the Temple of Baal, it's in, it was originally built in Syria. It's going to be recreated. So people are going to recreate this evil place, and they're going to put it in probably some of the most popular places of the world, right in New York City, Times Square, and also in uh, in in London. And, and they say it's for World Heritage Week. That's why they're doing it. Now, it's reported that the structure will not be a full permanent uh, operational house of worship. And uh, <laughs> hallelujah for that. Uh, but who knows? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what it one day turns into real soon. But for now, they're just building uh, for a month. They're going to leave it up or so. The ark of this uh, this place here in the Temple of Baal. And it's being built as a tribute to the 2,000-year-old structure. So it's a structure 2,000-year-old that the Islamic State destroyed in Syria in the town of uh, Perma. Well, what had happened was a couple of years ago, it might have been last year, I believe, uh, the ISIS came to uh, and destroy all uh, all of this temple and all of these artifacts. Now, yes, it's 2,000 years old, and very few people uh, uh, can enjoy seeing something 2,000 year old that has been preserved, uh, destroyed. A lot of people don't like that. But you know what, folks? We got to look at not just what or the age of something, but what it is. And as believers, what we're can commanded to do. Are we commanded to take something from 2,000 years ago and worship it? And, and idolize it and preserve it. And some things there are. There's many ancient artifacts that are found in, in Israel and, and, and Rome and other parts that uh, have great biblical significance that are not bad things or evil things. But there are a lot of things that are being found out there and preserved that <laughs> they should never be preserved according to Scripture. Now, I'm not sure how all of this will end up uh, in, in April with the ark being built and stuff, uh, but we are told specifically in Scripture not to mimic, but to destroy false gods, idols, and places of worship. Do you know how significant this is? Once again, you have a people, and, and, and I'm sure there are Christians involved in the, in the design of this thing, you have people uh, mimicking one of the most evil uh, places ever to exist. And right in the middle of, well, you could say in some of the evil places that are existing in Times Square in London. Uh, but it's just uh, absolutely a sad, serious, crazy thing that many people, too many people are overlooking. So let's look at some scripture and see what it says here. Exodus 23.24. Exodus 23.24 says, You must not worship the gods of these nations or serve them in any way or imitate their evil practices. 
Instead, you must utterly destroy and smash their sacred pillars. So when the Israelites went into wherever it was, whether it was the promised land or whether it was, uh, you know, wherever it was, where Syria is today or wherever it was, if they came upon the, the, the foreign uh, objects or, or a place of worship or, or anything like this, Scripture says they are to be destroyed. Deuteronomy 12.2, let's go there. It says, Deuteronomy 12.2 says, When you drive out the nations that live there, so when they're going into a town, driving out the nations, you must destroy all the places where they worship their God. And that would be uh, a temple, uh, would be one of the places. High on the mountains, up on the hills, and under every green tree. So wherever they're worshiping one of the gods, that place must be destroyed. So uh, I, now, folks, I don't support any non-biblical theology. I don't support uh, non-believers in what they do and, and, and promote it and so on. But it, it is a sad tragedy when we live in a world today where it seems there are other belief systems, religions, cultures, or whatever you want to call it, that they're doing things that are more biblical than many of the so-claimed Christians are. You know, for example, you look at you look at uh, Islam and you look at, you know, modesty in their diet, in their prayer. From my observation, many obedient people of the Islam faith take those things more seriously than the majority of lukewarm Christians here in the United States. And that is a sad thing. And that is really sad. Now, now we go on to look even further. ISIS. The Islamic State that that so many even even Muslims are against them that, that that they're so extreme in what they're doing. By them destroying this two thousand year old structure of the Temple of Baal, which is a foreign pagan god that was highly worshipped in that time, by them destroying this, they in fact have done to a degree what Scripture commands us as believers to do: going to the cities and destroying. Anything that had to do with false gods or, or God they didn't believe and destroying these things, not preserving these things. So uh, it, it is just backwards that such an evil organization like the Islamic State would go there and do such a biblical thing that you would have uh, many Muslims taking things like prayer and food and modesty and other biblical subjects so seriously. And I'm not supporting uh, their theology in any way. But then you have. People in the United States actually doing the opposite and mimicking those things. And the scriptures are clear about blessings and curses being attached to things. And not only things, but uh, to actions. Well, let's go on and look uh, and see this. Let's look at Judges. In Judges 2, 12 to 13, so 2, 12 and 13, it says, And they forsook Yahweh, a wonderful creator uh, of their fathers, who brought them out from the land of Egypt. And they went after other gods, of the gods of the people who were around them, and bowed themselves to them, and angered a wonderful creator Yahweh. Ye, they forsook Yahweh, and served Baal and the Astrots, or all the other foreign gods. So, in, you know, in the Bible, Baal was the, one of the reigning false gods worshipped at that time in pagan cities of Canaan and, and, and all these other cities. So you have one of the most popular gods, his temple, in the most popular places, and and we're mimicking it today. And we wonder why there are so many consequences here uh, in the United States and so many things are going wrong and why there's so many curses upon us. The name Baal appears 63 times in 51 verses in the King James Bible. You know, folks, before the Hebrews entered the promised land, a wonderful creator warned them against worshiping Canaan's gods. They were clearly warned. Deuteronomy 6, 14 and 15 says, You shall not go after other gods of Elohim, of the people who are around you. For Yahweh Elohim is a jealous Elohim in your midst, lest the anger of Yahweh your Elohim burn against you, and he destroy you from the, from the face of the earth. From the face of the earth. Goes on to say, but Israel turned to idolatry anyway. During the reign of Ahab and Jezebel, at the height of Baal, worshiping Israel, Yahweh directly confronted their paganism through Elijah. 
So I'm going to read that to you again. Deuteronomy 16, 14 says, you shall not go after other gods. Now, people are doing that today. Uh, you know, you should you should uh, walk, be careful of the other people around you. Yahweh Elohim is a jealous Elohim in your midst, lest the anger of Yahweh Elohim burn against you and he destroy you from the face of the earth. So that's what's happened out down here today. And uh, Elijah, we as we read, the same thing happened back then because they were going to the to their gods and, and just other gods and the gods of the land and everything else. And we need to be more aware of this. We need to have a passion against this the way we have a passion about many other things. Uh, but this is a serious thing and it's taking place right now. In 1 Kings 18.21, it talks about Elijah, which I just read. It says, Then Elijah stood in front of them and he said, How much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If Yahweh is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. So that was the warning, folks. And what did the people do when they got this warning? It goes on to say in the same scripture, 1 Kings 18.21, it says, And the people, or but the people, were completely silent. You know, the scripture says, if you're for me or against me, there's no neutrality with our creator. And if you're saying nothing, you're against him. And here's the warning, you know, not to be double-minded. You know, now I'm not going to claim that the United States is, is the Babylon from the Bible, but I will tell you, there's certainly many attributes of society today resembling the paganism of Babylon that has been taking place. So at this temple, we had all the things that are, that are quite common today. And this is what made this temple so evil. And now they're rebuilding this temple. You know, we live in a society today that glorifies homosexuality, pornography, and drunkenness. Exactly what they did back then in the temple worship service right on the ark of the Temple of Baal that's being uh, built in Times Square in London. Then you look about, they had sacrifice. They had child sacrifices at this temple. And then you look at the time today, we kill over 3,000 babies alone in the United States alone through trial sacrifice of abortion. You know, going hand in hand with what was going back at, back, on back then. And to top it all off, you know, we as the people of this country elect a so-called leader to lead the country that goes completely against the Christian values of the scriptures of our wonderful creator. You know, we have become a nation that does not want to follow a wonderful creator at all. I mean, and the so-called believers are even being led uh, astray by the by these uh, false teachings. You know, we should never seek to team up with evil, folks. Under any circumstance, we should never seek to team up with evil or any evil organization like Islam or ISIS or the Islamic State or anything like that. No. But we should not be so upset when they do something that we were biblically called to do and something we should have been done a long time ago. The only reason we should have been upset is because they beat us to it. But not because they did it. And we certainly shouldn't be mimicking this thing and building it in one of the most popular cities in the most popular place. You know, the Temple of Baal is not a cultural heritage site that so many people that want to preserve these sites say, oh, the Islamic State... Uh, destroyed this cultural uh, heretical uh, heritage site. No. It's an evil house of worship that should have been destroyed a long time ago by the so-called believers. Just like back then and just like today. You know, he gave them the choice. Today, choose life or death. And the people stayed silent. They answered not a word. You know, so, so as a Christian or as a so-called believer, you should ask yourself, should we be upset by replicas of the 50-foot art that stood at the entrance of the temple uh, that will be erected in April 2016, this month in Times Square, New York City, and also in London? Absolutely, we should be upset. We should be upset. We should do something about it. I, I will even submit to you, I'm not into uh, criminal activities. But I will submit to you, if anyone's listening and, and, and sees this, I don't think, according to Scripture, you'd be wrong by destroying this replica of what should have been destroyed originally. That's probably one of the only things that can make it right, is if people went in, in London and New York City and destroyed this replica of this pagan thing. And, you know, there's a Scripture, Hosea 4, 6, that says, My people are destroyed. For lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
And that's what has happened today and, and, and continues to happen. And that's why there's no passion today. People do not fear our wonderful creator. They don't fear sin. They don't fear uh, unrighteousness. They fear the, the man and the things of this world more than they fear our creator. And that's a big reason why we have these problems today. But you look at the idea of Baal and Babylon. And, 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 uh, and these two words, the Temple of Baal and in Babylon, you know, they're central in the scriptures. You know, when the scriptures talk about idolatry and the warning from my idolatry that it gives. And it's all over scripture. There's there's a lot of paganism and, and things going on in the scriptures that are not of our wonderful creator. But there's a lot of instructions of what to do with those things. When and how to destroy them. And examples of blessings that took place every time our creator's instructions were followed. And those things were destroyed versus the curses that came every time the people disobeyed and just ignored it. And had an attitude like people have today saying, well... You know, that's not, but not, not, I got nothing to do with that. You no, know, you have everything to do with that as a so called believer. And we need to speak up. We need to do something about it. The idea of coming out of Babylon is what this whole show is about. You know, this program's about teaching people the truth and letting the truth set them free. And the truth is that we are stuck in Babylon, just like the, the children were stuck in, in slaves in Egypt. And they came out of Egypt. And we need to come out of Babylon, folks. We need to understand, know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, the truth is Yahshua, the one you call Jesus. And in him, we should be set free from, from the idea of anything to do with the pagan worship, the sun gods and the temples and the shrines and everything else. We should be set free from having to deal with that stuff. We should be set free from having to see that stuff. But no, it's all around us. The streets are flooded with sin. We're not set free from that. And to make it even worse, many so-called believers are partaking in that with joy. That's an issue, folks. That's a big issue. You know, not only is uh, the idea of uh, Baal and Babylon a, a, a historical, physical fact, but it's also a prophetic thing about the end times. Hosea 2, 16 and 17 says, When that day comes, says Yahweh, you will call on my husband, you will call me husband instead of my me master, or you will call me my husband instead of my master. O Israel, I would wipe the many names of Baal from your lips, and you will never mention them again. So you see, this is very prophetic. In the end times, we are going to call him my husband, you know, instead of, you know, and not my master. As it says in the scripture here in Hosea 2, 16, 17. But then it goes on to say, you know, I will wipe the names of Baal from your lips. And here, that's what scripture says. And what does the world do? What does man do? Man does the antithesis to scripture. And they go and they build up this evil structure. Again, in Jeremiah, we read similar passages. And in this, uh, apparently these messages, you know, continue uh, to have different meanings for the end times. But Jeremiah 23, 27 says, uh, By telling these false dreams, they are trying to get my people to forget me, just as the ancestors did by worshipping the idols of Baal. That is significant, folks. I want to encourage everyone to read Jeremiah 23 and see who, who's being spoken about here. And the false prophets having the false dreams. And it says, by trying, they're trying to get my people to forget me. Just as the ancestors did by worshiping the idols of Baal. So now you got this structure, this ark, this 50 foot ark that's being built in the middle of the, the most popular city, in the middle of the most po a pop popular city and state in the country, New York City, and also in London. And, you know, so you had prophets back then in, in the time of Jeremiah when it was written. And all throughout scripture, you had the prophets. And what was happening was there were many false prophets saying that they had a dream or a vision. It wasn't from Yahweh. It was from some evil spirit. And they would tell their dreams. They, they, would, they would tell their so-called prophecies. And they were proven to be false prophets, but the people still believed them. And, 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 and even more important, these, these evil false prophets, which are told also to be destroyed in Scripture, uh, these, evil, e these evil false prophets were telling people dreams 
for one goal or one goal only. Well, there were many goals, but the, uh, what was happening was they are trying to get my people to forget me. That's, that is significant, folks. There are so many distractions of this world, and the greatest distraction of the enemy is to try to get us to forget our creator. And this isn't new. It happened uh, just like uh, the ancestors did by worshiping the idols of Baal. Anything that you worship or anything that you put in front of our creator and, and, and you're coveting it, you know, that's what you are doing. You are making that more important than our creator. And that's what's going on today and that's what's happening today. And Jeremiah 23 is really powerful uh, when it, it talks about this. You know, look, let's look at here. It says... Uh, uh, so Jeremiah 23, 11 says, For both the prophet and the priest are wicked, ye. I have found their evil in my house, says Yahweh. So there are these false prophets and these false priests uh, talking about false things that weren't really real. And then verse 14 says, I have also seen a horrible thing among the prophets of Jerusalem. They, they commit adultery and walk in falsehood, and they make the hands of evildoers strong. So they're encouraging the evildoers. So that not a man returns to, from his evil. They are all of them like Sodom to me and those living in Gomorrah. And we know the evil that was taking place there. Verse 16. So says Yahweh of hosts. Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of Yahweh. They say to those who despise me, Yahweh has said, you shall have peace. And they say to everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own Evil shall not come on you. That is a lie, folks. And this is this is the problem, personally, I have today with the majority of the Christian church. It's just what it's saying here. It's not saying not to list the prophecies and prophets, the prophecies and prophets of the Bible that are proven prophets, not the false prophets of man today that are claiming things that are taking us away from our Creator and lying by telling us that uh, there, there's no evil that will happen to us. Evil shall not overcome us. See, that's why most of the the mega churches today are mega churches because they're teaching almost a half gospel. They're not teaching truth. They're not teaching about the consequences for living in sin. And when, when the false prophets back then, who we were commanded not listen to, says, they say to you, those who despise me, Yahweh shall say, you shall not have peace. Or, or, or you shall have peace. And they say to everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, evil shall not come on you. So you have these false prophets telling people, Regardless of what they're doing, there'll be peace in the land and evil will not come upon them. Verse 27, and we read it earlier, uh, Jeremiah 23, 27. The plot to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell each one to his neighbor. Even as their fathers have forgotten me, my name, for in replacement of Baal. So people are going to Baal, not to our wonderful Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And that's it, folks. That is the issue. We need to get on track. We need to get right with his word. And unfortunately, sadly, uh, you know, but, but biblically and prophetically, many people are, have went astray. You see, there's a dark world out there, folks. There's a really dark world. And it's pitch dark, the darkest darkness you've ever seen. You know what? Those that have a chance at salvation have a light for their path. And that light, as it says in the scriptures, thy word is thy light. So, you know, if you're walking around in darkness with a light, you're fine. But if you're walking around in darkness with no light, you're in trouble. You know, and Yeshua, the light of the world, uh, he needs to be our light. And we need to let people know about him. That's Yeshua, the one you call Jesus. And it says there are two paths, folks. And we might think that this is a simple choice. And a lot of people are going to choose it. And I'll say it's a wise choice and only few will choose it. Because it says in scriptures, many are called but few are chosen. Well, in uh, ancient uh, uh, Arab uh, Aramaic language, it says many are called but few choose. You see, we have a choice. Choose life or choose death. That's our choice. And it says there's a wide path and there's a narrow path. It says many will choose that wide path and that is the path of darkness. But then there's a narrow path that leads to that narrow gate. Folks, that narrow path is the, the will of our Father. The guidelines and instructions of our wonderful Creator Yahweh, those that seek and desire to keep that narrow path, will get to that narrow gate. 
And that narrow gate is Yahshua, the one you call Jesus. And it says, many will look or many will be out there, but only few will find it. Now, are you going to be one of those few? Are you going to seek to come out of Babylon and, and not to worship these pagan false idols uh, that are being erected all over the world today? Or are, are you going to follow the world uh, to the pits of destruction? You know, that's the choice we have and the great opportunity and the greatest gift that our Creator left behind was His Word, the Bible. We need to dust off our Bibles. We need to read our Bibles every day. We need to know what the Word of our Creator says. And then we actually have to go out there and do it. You know, the reading it's not enough, folks. We got to go out there and do it. You know, what it says in the Scriptures is, uh, do not add or take away, but keep my guidelines and instructions. Or do not add or take away, but do my commandments. Many people don't even know what the commandments are. Many people dummy them down to two commandments or one commandment. And a lot of people are misunderstood because of deception of, of how to keep the commandments accurately or how even what they mean accurately. And this is one of the things Yeshua did when he was here. He explained to the Pharisees and the sages what the scriptures really mean. He explained to all the people what the scriptures really mean to take the power away from man. And put it back to where it belongs with our creator, our king, Yahshua, the one you call Jesus. That's it. That's why he had a problem with the evildoers, with the workers of iniquity. And he did the righteous thing and taught the righteous thing. And that is the foundation of all scriptures, known as the will of our creator, the first five books of the Bible, starting with Genesis, known as the Torah. So I want to encourage everybody to, uh, uh, to, to read the beginning of the book, this important uh, aspect that so many Christians are often looking at the New Testament only, and they're not looking at the original covenant as well. Folks, we have to understand the Bible is not two books. It's one book. And we have to uh, eliminate or delete one of the pages in the scriptures that's causing a lot of confusion. And that's the page between the original covenant and the renewed covenant, also known as the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's one book, folks, not two. And I want to submit to you that if you seek, you will find. But if you only look half the way, you're only going to find half the answer. A wonderful creator says, know the plans I have for you. They are for good and not disaster. To give you a future and give you a hope. So no matter where we are, no matter what we've been through, we all have a future and a hope. But the reality is time is running out. Time's running out, folks. So we need to do something about this extremely quickly. Because we don't know when that time's going to be. We don't know if it's going to be right now. We don't know if it's going to be this evening. But we know it's coming. So we have to prepare ourselves. And the best way to prepare yourself is to read and repent and get right with the word of our creator. So I thank you for joining me here today on the show. I'll be back next week for your comments, questions below the video. Thank you and shalom, shalom. Thank you for checking out uh, this important topic that a lot of people aren't talking about. More people need to be talking about this. It's a current event that's taking place right now. Go to uh, Google or YouTube and, and look it up and see what the progress is on this. And uh, oh, Heavenly Father Yahweh, that somebody would come and destroy this wicked, evil thing that's taking place as commanded in your scripture. So uh, thank you, everybody, for checking us out. Put your comments, questions below the video. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, stay strong and praise our wonderful creator. Shalom. Torah Life Ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth.